Oh, the first I saw was a pretty fair miss combing down her locks. She said she saw a bold ranger among the geese and ducks with a hoot toot toot and a hollow along the narrow trail. Come a ran, 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 come a hippy tippy tan and the bugle wang wow and the bugle sound as through the woods he run very wild, sir, through the woods. He run, sir. Oh, the next I saw was a teamster a plowing with his team. He said he saw Bolringard running up the drain with a hoot toot toot and a hollow along the narrow trail. Come a ran, 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 come a hippy tippy tan and a bugle wang wow and the bugle sound as through the woods he run very wild, sir, through the woods he run, sir. Oh, the next I saw was a hunter, a hunting with his gun. He said he saw bow ranyard and shot him as he run with a hoot toot toot and a hollow along the narrow trail. Come a ran, 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 come a hippy tippy tan, and the bugle wang wow, and the bugle sound. As through the woods he run very wild, sir, through the woods he run, sir. I learned that from Roth Ellison. He, I guess, learned it from his dad, William Thomas Ellison, up near the meat camp community. Of Wadauga County, North Carolina. Was that over on Long Hope that he lived, or was that kind of up above them? That uh, they lived uh, right where you start up Long Hope Mountain. Uh -huh. Best I can figure, Long Hope runs starts in Wadauga County and runs over into Ash somehow. Uh, Bill Ellison said that he used to go coon hunting up on top of uh, Long Hope Mountain. I guess up on uh, it's real close to Riddle's Knob up there. Hmm. And uh, he said he'd have him a campfire. He'd be by himself a lot of times, and he'd uh, let the dogs loose to run, and he'd sit by the campfire, and he'd stay out about all night and he'd sing them old love songs. One of them which he done, I'll just do a verse or so of it. Because uh, I could imagine him sitting up on that mountain and looking at the wide starry sky and uh, him singing this. Because there wasn't nobody around for miles up there. and. Uh, it started out to cold mountains they are here around us and waters trade when down the stream all on my bed I thought I was with her but when I woke it was all a dream. When I awoke and could not find her, all on my bed did weep and mourn. Tears from my eyes fell without number to think that I was left alone. Hmm. And talking about hunting, that made me think of one time it, um, I was living with my grandparents uh, not far out of Lenore and my first cousin, Mike Hobson, he lived over at Green Mountain in Yancey County he got hold of a hog rifle, and that's an old-time uh, percussion uh, 
gun that uh, like they used to hunt with a lot. They had flintlocks and then they had the ones that fired off the cap too. And anyway, he had got a hold of one and had uh, called me and wanted to know if I wanted to go hunting. It was uh, deer season. Uh, you could go with the muzzleloader and and uh, he said we'd go on on Saturday and so I told him yeah I'd be glad to go and uh, I'd meet him at his house on Saturday morning well it's about an hour and a half drive or a little more to from uh, where I lived at Lenore up to Mike's house and uh, that Saturday morning, while I was on my way up there, Mike got called in to work. Back then he was working for the county. Um, they did road work and something had happened that he got called in that morning. I was then left home from Nanny and Papa's and, and uh, so he left the gun with his wife uh, Peggy and uh, told her to let me have it when I come and for me to leave word which way I headed to, uh, so he'd know to meet me he's just going to work I think a half a day or something like that and, and uh, he wasn't sure how familiar I was with using a, a hog rifle and so he loaded it for me and now Mike, he's a thrifty feller. He never hardly overdoes anything, or he didn't back then. And uh, he uh, he put a little load in there and packed it in there real good and, and left it for Peggy to give me. Well, when I got there, she told me he'd gone to work and it'd be at her dinner before he could come for me just to go on and tell her which way I was heading. And, and uh, he'd meet me at her dinner. Well, now dinner, of course, is the noon meal in the mountains. And as I found out many years later over in England, too, they used to call it that as well. But anyway, uh, Maggie failed to tell me that he had loaded the gun. I hoped it. She didn't do it on purpose, but anyway, she gave it to me, and I told her that I was going down the river, and and uh, so I started on. Well, I got as far down there as I could get in a four-wheel drive, and uh, got out, and when I did, I figured, well, I better put on my uh, wading boots in case I needed to cross the river and I, I did and I got way off down in there and you know you get in them gorges like that and the river winds around sometimes it's easier to go across a, a ridge and you can come out further down the river quicker than you would by following the, the river itself. And, uh, but before I got down in there, I, when I got out of the truck, I figured, well, I guess I better load up in case I come across a deer before Mike showed up. And so, well, with me, uh, I don't have to do anything. I might do it all wrong, but uh, I won't have to do it. It's always been root hog or die. And so I... I poured my powder down in the gun, uh, uh, quite a bit of powder, and packed the ball down in there, got it in there tighter than Dick's hat band. And I started off. Well, I got down there a good ways, wandering around, got, I guess, I don't know if I went maybe two or three miles down in the gorge. And I wasn't having any luck where I was at. I come on a place where it, there was a 
a big rock cliff off to my left up there. And, uh, shout and holler it run back up the mountain. And there wasn't no deer sign much. I just wasn't having a bit of luck. And I thought, well, maybe if I was to go across the river, uh, I'd uh, have better luck over there on the Mitchell County side of the river. And so uh, I put on my boots. I might have said that I done had them on, but I didn't put them on until I got ready to get in the water. And I got my boots on, and I stood up, and I looked across the river, and there's, there's a little cove over there where a, a branch run out of the mountain and down into the river, and uh, just a little bit of a, of a beach-like place where the woods ended, and there's a little sand, and at the end of it, and about that time, the biggest buck deer that I ever seen in my life stepped out of the woods, and it come down there to drink water, and I'm telling you, it had a rack of horns on its head. It was looked gigantic to me from where I sat. I don't know. I I counted 14 or 15 pints on the on its rack from where I sat, and I couldn't see that good to see them all. And, uh, and I thought, oh boy, uh, I've got you now. And uh, so I drove my bead on it, but about the time that I, I did that, this little commotion caught the corner of my eye, and I looked right down to blow me to my left, and there's a um, I guess it's a sycamore tree grown close to the bank of the river and there's a big bold limb growing out the upper side of it and sitting up there on the limb of that sycamore was a, a, about five or six of them are birds that comes from over on the other side of Canada over in China I guess it is him ring-necked pheasants. Well, I never had seed but one in North Carolina. Uh, one time when I was a kid, one flew up in the beech tree behind the house. That's the only one I'd ever seen. I didn't know what to think seeing about six of them sitting on a limb. And I thought to myself, Lord, it'd be nice to get them birds and, and that deer too. But I never had time to think about it because uh, a uh, little rock rolled across my boot about that time and I turned around and looked to see where it come from and back over there against that rock cliff, that bluff over there, was two of the prettiest little black bear cubs you ever seen in your life. They didn't notice me or hadn't seen me yet. And there's a plan having a big time. And and I thought, long well, mercy, I wished I had all of them varmints. And, uh, but about the time I thought that, I had another thought. And I realized that, you know, out in the woods like that, you ain't going to see something's young but what the mammy ain't around somewhere. <laughs> and, uh, just about that time I heard a roar. And then I looked over my right shoulder and coming out of that dry holler up behind me was the old she by herself. She was flying out of that holler. And uh, about the time I looked, she had done got down within about 12 or 14 foot of me and up she reared on her hind legs. And I mean, they get up there uh, and they'll wobble over, and, and and you've had it if you ain't got an awful lot of luck. And uh, I couldn't, I, usually, generally whenever I get scared, I can burn the wiener. But that was one time my feet just absolutely wouldn't take the rest of me where it wanted to go. And... Uh, I didn't know what to do. I, I, she was so close. She was about two or three 
wobbles away from swamping my head halfway across the river, and uh, she's too close to really take aim much, but all I could think of was fire the gun, fire the gun. And so I slung the gun barrel over my shoulder and didn't know about them two shoots in the gun. And about the time I slung it over my shoulders, about the time her nose about went in the barrel, <laughs> she was that close. And I pulled the trigger. Bam! That stuff had to go somewhere, and it did. It blowed that gun up. The barrel split right in that bear's face and killed her dead in four o'clock. And uh, the hammer, it the explosion knocked it up on that limb that them pheasants was sitting on and split it, and it snapped back shut on her spurs till they couldn't fly. And the stock of that gun was just blowed plumb across the river and hit splintered that deer to death over there where he was at. And of course, uh, it th the, the explosion throwed me right down there in the river and where I thought it was kind of shallow, there happened to be a big hole down in there. And I crawled out of gagging and coughing about to puke and come up on a rock there and sit down. Went to let the water out of my boots and 50 trout fell out of each boot. And there I was just sitting with all that plunder and I just didn't know what to think. And about that time, uh, uh, my cousin Mike showed up. He come down there and he was standing with his jaw dropped wide open, his eyes bugged out, looking at all that stuff. Them birds up there couldn't fly and uh, them fish are laying there and that deer dead across the river and that old mammy bear laying there dead. And <laughs> I said, well, get some string and we'll uh, tie them birds up and, and uh, do something with them cubs, I reckon. I might have just let them go, I don't know. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, he started to speak and about that time, out of the woods, out of that same holler that bear run out of, a rabbit got scared. And, it hopped out of there and started running off up the trail that Mike had just come down. And I reckon I was just all head up from uh, excitement of <laughs> getting all them varmints and, and my hunting uh, uh, emotions was all roused up. And so <laughs> I, I jerked the gun out of Mike's hand and uh, run up through there trying to get that rabbit. I figured I guess I might as well add one more trophy to my pile. And it got up there ahead of me running. It, fought, it stayed on that trail a good long ways and finally it got ahead of me and uh, went around sort of a bend in the mountain there. And uh, I was so frustrated at that that I looked over and there's two I think, I don't know if it's uh, sassafras trees or what. Anyway, there's two young saplings growed up pretty close together right off the path there. And I run over there and I stuck the gun barrel in between that and I, and I, I bent the gun barrel, made an arc out of it. And I got back in the trail and I shot around the mountain and knocked that rabbit off its feet. Killed it dead too. Well, I was fixing to walk up there and pick up the rabbit, and I heard something up in the woods. And that got my curiosity up, and I couldn't figure out what it could be. And I, I climbed up the bank there and, and uh, got through the bushes and looked up there, and there's a wild hog in the woods. And it was up there and it seed me. And it started, and it just went to snorting and grunting and 
running right down there with them tushes look like they're sharp as razor points and and uh, I was backing up and backing up and uh, just about time it got to me my feet slid out from under me and I went down, down the bank back down there in the pipe again and there's a tree right there and the hog it could, didn't have time to stop or turn it run right into that tree and drove its tushes clean up into that tree four or five inches and there it was caught. So I was beginning to wonder how we was going to ever get all that truck out of there. And I went back down there to where Mike is at and uh, I said well we got a pile here to deal with and I said uh, you start on that uh, deer if you can get it across the river I said I'll get these birds out of this tree here and I had me string and I went to hooking it around their legs made me about six different loops and tied it to the main leader piece and and, uh, and then I got pulled back on the limb and got it separated till they could get out and and as soon as they come out of that, they wanted to fly. Well, they got tugging against me, and I was pulling against them. And this pretty stout, this pretty big bird. And, uh, and they was pulling a little harder than I was, I reckon. For the next thing I know, I looked down, and my feet, uh, the water of the river was lapping under my feet, and they was to burn me up. Them birds was, uh, there's a gaining, there's a gaining on me. <laughs> there's a getting up higher and higher, and pretty soon I was getting up over, over the river. And there's a flying across the river, and, and uh, by the time we got across, there's above the trees. And there's a going up the mountain, a flying up towards it. And I was a getting scared and scared because they was getting further up above the trees. And pretty soon we got to the ridge top. And when we got up there, I know that I had to do something or I'd be a, a gone gander myself because the, uh, uh, there wouldn't be nothing but for me to fall for hundreds of feet if uh, something didn't happen. And I looked down and I seen a, a, a big, uh, looks like a spruce, or a, which w that's what we call a hemlock. Uh, looked like it had pretty wavy branches. And I let go and, and uh, them birds got away. <laughs> and I fell down in that uh, uh, spruce and turned out that it was rotten down the middle of it. And I went right in the darn hole. And I landed for plop in the something wet. It's all good out. <laughs> and it was wet and sticky. And I got to feeling around it. It smelled pretty good. And I licked my finger and it turned out it was honey. It was a bee tree. Well, I knocked a a knot out of the tree there and I come out of there all covered up in that honey and I thought Lord have mercy they must have been 200 gallons in that tree but I didn't have time to think about it much because I heard a roar and I looked up and coming up the ridge was the biggest uh, black bird I ever seen in my life and he smelt that honey on me, and he got to chasing me. Well, I didn't have a gun or nothing, and I took off a flying. That's one time my feet did take the rest of me <laughs> where it wanted to go. I was running down the holler just as quick as I could run. That bear, he was gaining on me. And I got down there until I, I hit a, a snag. <laughs> There's a root or logger. <laughs> <coughs> something 
laying in the trail there, and I tripped over it, and I fell, and I, I know right then that I was a donor. And I just laid there all covered up in the ball and waited for him to get me. And nothing happened. It, God is still and quiet. And I, I wondered what in the world was going on. I reared up and, and looked back up at this little piece above me. And that bear had come up on a big rock there and it was, it was sort of like it was laying down on its knees with its forepaws up and its head laying in its paws. And I seen that and I guess I got the big head or something. And I said out loud, uh, said, what are you doing? Said, uh, your prayers. And about that time, one of his eyes opened up. And he looked down there at me and said, no, I'm a saying grace. And so, as old I hear would have said, my God, I guess the man had to get out of there some way. <laughs> <laughs> God, my <for> God. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's the most, uh, that was the fire day something I guess <laughs> I, I done that day. Uh, I got a few things out of that.